Guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be a really exciting one. This is unfortunately the only replays I have from Group C, but it is going to be a great one because we got Tucson upper left hand corner. Tucson's been a threat to go to the finals and potentially win it for a number of Hasuli seasons. And you have Fisheye, who has gotten pretty deep and has challenged for a final at least once. So Fisheye starting bottom right hand corner is the pink Protoss. Tucson upper left hand corner as the teal Protoss. I am presuming that. So fisheye, oftentimes it's just kind of a question of like what shape is fisheye in? Is fisheye practiced? Because I feel like when fisheye is practiced, it's like maybe a final championship this season. Tucson, I think has been steadily improving. So I would not be shocked to see Tucson potentially make it all the way to the finals. I feel like Tucson do like fisheye and who else am I missing? Uh, uh, those are the contenders that I'm thinking off the top of my head where I'm like, yeah, these are the, these are the people that are, that are threats. This is again on lobotomy. Which, if you've not seen it, you've got uh, some weird variation on Heartbreak Ridge, almost. Where you got the small gap in the middle, you do have the sweeping areas in between, but you have kind of the high ground vision as far as a cross point, otherwise natural expansion, on an inverted ramp as well. So it's like you've combined a lot of different aspects. Kind of a... I'll, I'll say it. You, It combines a lot of the challenging aspects, like an inverted ramp, uh, the random... Ooh, nice gas steal here by Fisheye. Inverted ramp, closed center point, and a lot of other random aspects that are usually create problems in other maps. Uh, which I think it it's one of those things where you have to, it really challenges, in my opinion, large unit movement and control. I can see, I could see two factory playing really well or really poorly, depending on how the micro works out midpoint. But otherwise, trying to go all the way around uh, somewhat delayed. We do have a gateway opener out from Fisheye. It is also a two player map, by the way. Tucson scooting. We're not seeing the usual, looks like it's just going to be a single SCV dedicated on that assimilator. So I wouldn't be shocked if an initial zealot gets produced here by Fisheye and has some success marching all the way to the main. We do have that barracks up and running. I presume we're going to see at least an initial Marine. Probe doing a lot of harassment, by the way. I'm sure Tucson's shaking his fist. Try hard. We do have that in it. Two zealots queued up already. And with that assimilator, being out of here, this is going to be pretty delayed, and the probe doing a great job of creating some havoc in the meantime. Is he going to get a shot? <laughs> going to sneak into the simulator briefly. Recharge some shields before dying. We do have the proxy engineering bay to try to counter this. And actually with the length of this map, I believe Fisheye is going to just hold here. And just going to, yeah, pull out a probe and go for that natural expansion, recognizing that it's going to be a delayed factory. Uh, early economic lead, etc, etc. Let's see if Tucson, upon seeing this, noticing that it's an attempt at a base grab. Kind of interesting. So we have one zealot that's skirting out to make its way to the natural. The next is getting dropped. The Terran able to go in. So Dulife able to go in, see a lack of gas. So has to know that it's a Nexus follow-up. A bunker in construction and three Marines. Four Marines is usually where you... So three Marines with micro beats a, a zealot. Four Marines, you feel very safe. And there's that fourth marine marching the way out. But we got two zealots making the way to the front. And it looks like that bunker is in fact finished. The question is, is will there be a run by now? So let's see if the zealots scoop up and they just ignore the bunker. And charge their way across. The SCV sees the two zealots out on the low ground. The zealots see the bunker. Nice blockading with that SCV. And yeah, Fisheye just kind of walk right by. A lot of damage done left on those zealots here, but still no factory, and actually that refinery just now getting the SCV on it. When SCV goes down, that is a pile of marines, which is not what you want to have. You usually want to have them more spread out, but those zealots already softened up, so they are going to be cleared out. So wild one thus far, and the probe actually able to sneak in as well. Is this another zealot? A third zealot dedicated from Fisheye. This is a bit greedy here. I think that was a bit of an overspend, potentially, and we actually got another zealot queued up, so never mind. Cybernetic score as well. Command center constructing. So SCV going to be able to get a lot of additional information. Fisheye has the base up. Cybernetic score up as well. But this is going to be... And actually the Marines now charging. So never mind that Zealot queued up. Was potentially wise. Is there going to be a bunker built underneath this? So SCV able to get scouting information regardless. The Marines going to back up. Especially because if the Zealots uh, made their way towards the... 
the midpoint gap. This is an ex this would be a, a challenging def run by in defense. But Tucson able to keep his eyes. So after all this early chaos, able to keep eyes, going to see that robotic facility follow up. And the factory just now finishing. Two factories being built behind this. I'm wondering if this is going to be double machine shop and a heavier siege tank composition to follow it up. Or if we're going to see just early vultures, knowing that there's a couple zealots wandering out in the field. The Marines again marching out. This is going to be potentially disastrous. Tucson, that he's lucky that Fisheye didn't pounce on that because might have been able to get an additional marine kill and maybe gone for an end around run by and gotten into the SCV line. Uh, although I don't know how much they would have been able to... to I, I, I don't know how much damage they would have been able to get done as far as the follow-up. Second gas dropped very rapidly. Nutty one thus far. Very chaotic. Second gateway finally dropped. One problem for Fisheye at this stage is he's been running off one gate for, gateway for quite a period of time. He's got two zalts very exposed if a single vulture gets out. But again, it looks like it is going to be a double machine shop siege tank composition. If you get sufficient siege tanks, oftentimes it can help nullify uh, early game shuttle reaver antics. And it looks like we do have a robotic support bay being constructed. The Zelts again testing that front line. Dragoon wants that SEV. How dare you end up in my base at some point. So it's gone. A couple defensive Dragoons here. Looks like we already have a reaver queued up. That might halt potential pressure, but it looks like we are going to have a maybe a vulture speed follow-up. I don't think mines were researched. So siege, tech's, siege tech is queued up. We already have one siege tank out. Is this going to turn into... So we got two marines here in the background. So is this going to turn into a really late side push in the midst of this? Potentially, yes, which would be maybe a disaster with that reaver out because the reaver could sufficiently stop this, but I, honestly, this could go either way. That's, that's not a massive padding for Fisheye. Fisheye skimped on a lot of early game troops. He hasn't pushed the gap position here. And that Reaver is going to come out pretty late. So he's going to need to, he's going to need that on the spot to help defend against this. But on the counter side of this, if Tucson isn't able to box out that shuttle with that Reaver and ends up losing those Marines, he could end up losing this entire attack force, at which point his natural and his main would be completely exposed and opened up. A Stargate dropped in between this. So shuttle... So this is going to be, honestly, the pivotal moment of the game here. Tucson actually with a supply lead, pressing into the natural expansion, dropping some mines on the low ground, scattering his troops out, but this is the bulk of the army over here. Reavers have not been involved yet. So there's the drop. Do they get the Marines? All the Marines are scattered. We got a few Marines left. That Reaver with the follow-up should be sufficient, but interesting, we got some spider mines in between. So now that Reaver picking up, Tucson has to run back to his base to deal with the potential Reaver damage. And the Observer going to float out and clear the mines in the in-between space. We do have, it looks like, some missile turrets up and some desperately trying to get built on the perimeter. A wild one. I don't think these turrets are going to be up in time. The Vulture is able to spot that. I'm wondering if Tucson's going to turn around in the midst of this. So, yeah, the shuttle not there. Goodbye. So, the SCV's preemptively evacuating. That is some dud right there. Wow, that was a dud. So, that turret gone. All the SCVs fling, uh, creating enough disruption already. So a delayed on the third, the third and fourth uh, base potentially. We have some vultures down in between. Where did the observer go? The observer really falling asleep at the wheel. We do have a turret along that back edge. There are well, be kind of hard to shoot the edge in between. It looks like the vultures want to cut off a third, but we already have double oh, two base carrier. Fisheye not kidding around here in game one. Double carrier queued up off two bases, feeling that there's maybe enough time to make that happen. And I actually love carriers on this map because... Holy cow. Also, have I been saying do life this entire time? I'm If I've said do life pre previous, I meant Tucson up to this stage. Uh, Marines, oh, getting some damage done on that shuttle, leaving it very, very weak. Observer going to provide some scouting. Unfortunately, the Zealot Bomb going to be risky with those two Marines alongside. Zealot getting dropped. 
Reaver there. Not able to get the Marines and the shuttle gone with the Reaver. Tucson easily going to be able to grab a third. But maybe the magic number of carriers will be out before he's able to do anything about it. So, and this is a pretty brutal... Hold on, let, we're going to back up and kind of survey the map. You can see all these ridge lines and all these areas of escape for carriers. So two base carrier are actually not that crazy on this map, in my opinion. Looks like there's already movement to maybe grab a third from Fisheye. Fisheye feeling like it might be possible as Tucson grabbing that third. The Vulture's trying to stream out. I'm not sure I like the Vultures out on this map going through the center corridor. This doesn't feel like they have a lot of spread. Tucson feeling a lack of army out in the map, moving the siege tanks, a lot of siege tanks, unseaged forward. Plus one weapons just about to finish. The vultures interspersed with the dragoons. And so Fisheye may be going to be forced to reveal this attack force before he is ready that these zealots do not have leg speed. And Tucson now encapsulating that army nearly at the natural. So yeah, the first two carriers going to have to sneak out. And yeah, they might be able to get a siege tank or two, but they're not going to be in large numbers, so... The Goliaths... So yeah, it breaks up the natural expansion contained, but it also gives forewarning to Tucson to go ahead and get the Goliath count up. It looks like maybe already anticipating it had the... I might have missed a com, uh, successful comsat. But now, with just the two carriers, Fisheye needs to do something miraculous. Third base being built, but this is behind Tucson's third base. Turrets built in between. It looks like those mines did get cleaned up. Decent gateway count. Observer picked off at the forward position. We only have two Goliaths, but... And it, some turrets being built to provide some of, that, some of that delay time. The Goliath count growing. And Fisheye going to back off momentarily. Has managed to sneak a supply lead, but... How many factories got? We're sitting at five factories. Might need a heavier factory count, especially off three bases. We only have six gateways in the midst of this, but we do have, again, that beefy carrier fleet potentially growing behind that. Siege tanks engaging at the gap. Some zealots in between. Again, no zealot leg speed. That was cut into, I believe, to get that spare gas for that carrier. And Tucson now sneaking forward making his way out towards that 3 o'clock base, which is highly under threat. So we got three carriers, a group, what, a control group of zealots, and a control group, not even a control group of dragoons, to try to fend off the siege tanks and the growing Goliath count behind it. Decent engagement point to box out the Goliaths underneath. Siege tank, at least a siege tank picked off. Some nice micro from Fisheye across that jagged wall and thinning that and doing a great job of focus firing the siege tank out, but also drawing the Goliaths out of position on top of his army, maybe out of defense position with the the siege tanks. So we have a lot of SCVs here to provide some repair support. And Fisheye getting pinned back to the three o'clock. The Goliaths. Having to fight two armies, unfortunately. Again, the Siege Shanks just out of position and exposed. And Tucson being a little bit over-aggressive and getting walked back. <clears throat> and honestly, that might cost him his third. Mines it looks like they're getting caught. Some SEVs latently getting caught as well. The Observer able to stream forward. Yeah, I don't think this, there's enough... This is not sufficient protection, and honestly, the carriers can just sit back here and pick off SCVs or even group fire. That command center, potentially. The Goliaths able to find some open ground. And one carrier goes down. Is the second carrier going to be behind it? Because it looks like Fisheye missed microing a little bit, neglecting his carriers. And that hurts a lot. Two. Oof. Two getting wiped out, and that was honestly a big bulk of his army. Another carrier streaming forward. To try to provide some support. Looks like a Dragoon is checking, making sure that fourth isn't up. But Tucson able to defend and hold at a healthy worker count. Has filled in the factories. Got a science facility up. Maybe to get some EMP out in the field. Fisheye looking for additional territory to go ahead and grab. 
on this map. So natural expansion humming. Stargates have not stopped producing carriers this entire time. SEV and Probe going to engage top right hand corner. We're going to watch this battle for a second. SEV gets the murder there. They were friends prior to this. That's why it was murder. Otherwise it would have just been a kill. This is why you can't befriend the, the enemy. Otherwise it turns you into murderer. That's solid logic, right? Perpetual warfare out in space. This is how it starts, people. Gotta, why can't we just get along? All right. <clears throat> Carry count at four. A couple of vultures trying to sneak through. It looks like there's some cannons and again, an air fleet, but they're still gonna get some value here. Nice micro on Tucson's part. Fisheye sitting at 50 workers, not the best. Nexus bottom left has been scouted, but you have an army in between that point. And one nice thing is, is with the hard to reinforce center point and the sweeping right points and a little bit of forewarning with a, a handful of units here and there, that does give forewarning for these carriers and this bulk troop in the middle to engage Tucson at any position potentially to stop any sort of ingress. However, Tucson behind this going ahead and grabbing that top right hand base, they'll put him to three active bases. Looks like a... So what is this going to turn into? So main's just about mined out, natural expansion about mined out. So it'll be two base versus two base for Tucson, which will put Tucson ahead. Tucson marching forward with plus one weapons, plus one armor, a formidable amount of Goliaths mid position. This is a lot. Took a lot of steel to produce this army, but Tucson's good for it. Near maxed armies, both ends. The carriers are nearby with the six count, but the rest of that army going to get pushed back. Looks like Zelts do have leg speed. We'll see if they're able to sweep in. So Fisheye a little bit hesitant to get out of the that jagged line positioning. What this is allowing to happen is, is it looks like the Goliaths do have sufficient... I was going to say, do they have sufficient, sufficient upgrades? If Goliaths have sufficient upgrades to pick off interceptors, it can be huge. Never mind, they're just going to step up and take out a carrier wholesale. But being able to pick interceptors out of the air can be a big win for Terran because you start bleeding off the minerals a little uh, latently as long as you stay ahead in that upgrade war. Trying to click on one of these, see if they got... Yeah, no, no armor upgrades. So should be able to pick them up before they're able to sneak in. Especially with this amount of Goliaths. So Tucson now has a forward bulkhead. And moving the siege tanks forward, catching a couple Dragoons stranded. And the carriers now at seven, encroaching, able to pick off a siege tank or two. Fisheye dropping uh, the micro a little bit. But... That Goliath count is starting to thin. We're just at eight. We do have a reinforcement group immediately replacing it, however. And this is one of those situations where, yeah, that doodad really working to Fisheye's favor, where the Goliaths kind of wander down across from it to try to engage the carriers. And then there's the Goliaths right there to pick off what's left. Siege tanks breaking off. It looks like they don't... They're not happy with the current terrain. Fisheye making great use of it. And so having a little bit of trouble deciding where to go, it looks like you're trying to break off to the three o'clock location. Siege tanks getting picked off. And the Dragoons, yeah, catching all the stragglers as they're making the way around. The Goliaths scatter shot, trying to make their way forward. I'm looking for some zealots to march up for Fisheye in between here. Another carrier getting picked off via the group fire. Looks like the zealots now starting to march the way around, but we do have some more Goliaths making the way forward. Another problem for Terran with this is making sure you have sufficient vultures and siege tanks underneath interspersed with the Goliaths. It can be very, very challenging. But now, Fisheye's army engaging Tucson in earnest and barreling all the way up headlong. So that's going to completely wreck the Goliath count. And you can see Tucson's supply count plummeting. And that's also going to expose that top right hand expansion don't think these mines are of too much concern at this stage and that's also going to expose that cliffside i'm going to call this the the command center with a view it's where the wealthy wealthy terran build their bases so they have that beautiful ridge side 
But this is... We got the proletariat marching in with Fisheye here. To tear that thing off the mountainside. Looks like there was a, another engagement here along that 9 o'clock. The army that was pocketed to the south marching and wiping out that command center before it was able to field. The Goliath's doing good job of marching forward and picking off the carriers, however. It still looks like it's insufficient because the... The Dragoon Count able to sneak in underneath and, the, yeah, the SCV is going to have to defend themselves. The guillotines are coming out. The workers on the opposite side. Yeah, there's GG. Hope you guys enjoyed it. A fun one between these two and the opener. I'm expecting fun one as far as the following matches. Appreciate your viewership. Thank you for listening.